Hey everybody, Joe McCall, Wholesaling Lease Options here. Uh, hi, I got another question and answer for you. And uh, I apologize about the glare in my glasses. Isn't that great? <laughs> you can't see my eyes, but I can't read this email here. But I got a great question here. <clears throat> Tony asks, um, I have a buyer who has good employment and adequate money to put down. Now, one of the great things that Tony is doing, he's a coaching student of mine out in California. He is finding the buyers first. Some, sometimes the fastest way to make money in this whole sibling lease option business is to find the buyers first who have the deposit and then pre-screen them and then find a home for them. That way when you're calling sellers it's not a fishing expedition where I might have a buyer for you. It's I have a buyer right now who's interested in your house who would like to lease purchase it. But anyway, I think Tony's doing an awesome thing. You're finding the buyers first and then looking for houses for them. And I'll talk a lot more about that in the course. But um, it's really important to build your buyers list, start networking with mortgage brokers. Um, I have a home finder program that I advertise where um, tenant buyers will uh, visit my website and sign up for my home finder program. But they first have to apply. And then secondly, they need to pay a $500 deposit. That's refundable if I don't find them a house that meets their qualifications within 60 days. Um, but the key is to find qualified buyers first and then find a home for them. Sometimes that's the fastest way to money. Recently a, a good investor friend of mine <clears throat> down in Georgia found a buyer who was actually looking for a home in St. Louis where I live. And um, he joined this buyer in St. Louis, joined his buyer's home finders program on his website in Georgia. Uh, so he calls me up and says, hey, do you have a house for this guy? And I didn't. So I said, well, I'll help you find one. And so we agreed to split 50-50, whatever the deposit was. And uh, within about, I'm not kidding, two calls, I found a seller um, who was interested in doing a lease purchase. And the family went to go look at the house and loved it. Um, so we split the profits on that deal. They put about $10,000 down on that house. And uh, I got a check for five grand, and he got a check for five grand. It was beautiful. Um, so even in my own business, I'm starting to focus on this more and more. But anyway, back to this question here. Um, Tony says here, he has a buyer who has good money to put down, good job. Um, and he even found a seller for them. Um, as a perfect home for them. However, they're about $4,800 behind on payments. And as of June 1, they will be about $6,400 behind on payments. Um, he says, my communication to them is that we can solve their problem as long as they can come up with the money to cure the arrears. And if they can't, are we looking at a short sale situation? Very good question. This is really, really, really important. Never, ever, 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 ever do a lease option for another tenant buyer with somebody who's facing foreclosure or who is behind on payments or who is about to be behind on payments. That's very, very risky and dangerous. Um, I would not do that. However, one time I did find a buyer who had a large deposit and uh, they were, um, they did not, well they, they loved this house, they wanted to do a lease purchase. Um, they had about <clears throat> $10,000 to put down on the house. I'm using around numbers. And the seller was about $3,000 behind on payments. Um, and so the way it worked out is that we took 7000 of the 10000 that the tenant buyer put down. I told the tenant buyer to put the extra $3,000 towards paying off some bad judgments and collections. Um, and then we took another $3,000 and I, wrote a ca I got a cashier's check to the bank to um, get the seller caught up on the mortgage. And then the other $4,000 that was remaining was my fee. Um, but the tenant buyer, when they buy the house, will get the full $7,000 as part of their down payment. And I also made sure that the tenant buyer had um, a way to access the seller's mortgage to make sure it was being paid on time every month. And there was a language in the contract that made it clear if the um, seller gets behind on payments, the tenant buyer can make the payments for the seller and they get a credit back of 50% of whatever that payment is going to be. So the tenant buyer has the right to find out if the mortgage is current and they have the right to make the payments to the bank if the mortgage gets behind. So anyway, 
Um, this is a seller now who is facing um, a foreclosure. They're behind on payments. Um, they're quite a bit behind on payments. I would suggest in this case to um, pass on the deal and find another house for the tenant buyer. Um, but what can you do with this deal? You're going to find sellers who are behind on payments. What do you do? Unless you're doing short sales, another great way to make money is find an investor who does do short sales and uh, send the house to them and work out or negotiate a referral fee with them. Um, so I have investor friends here in St. Louis. They'll pay me 10 to 20 percent of whatever foreclosure or short sale deal that I give to them if they can successfully negotiate it and sell it for a profit. Um, so that's happened to me several times. I made good little money, but not doing much work except referring the deal to another investor who does the short sale, who does the hard work. Um, so to Tony's question, again, you've got a good buyer that has good deposit. Definitely find another house for them. Um, and I would also suggest getting some kind of deposit from them before you start really spinning your wheels. Um, and I talk a lot more about that in, in, the, uh, in the course. But real quick, you want the tenant buyer to look for homes for you. You want to send them to Craigslist for rent, Craigslist for sale by owner sites, different FISBO sites. You want them to look for homes and then send them to you and you call the sellers. That's real important. And also it's real important to get a $500 deposit that's refundable if um, you don't give them a house that meets their criteria within 60 days, something like that. So I hope that helps. Say a long answer to a short questions, but uh, take care.